If you grew up in the millennial generation, then you've probably played these two games before. The goal for one of them is to try to keep your digital pet alive, and the goal for the other game is to roam around the west, trying to keep your group of settlers alive. I feel like both games helped introduce a sense of responsibility into our childhoods and gave us a better idea of what it feels like to make adult decisions for a day. Speaking of adult decisions, now that we're all grown up, at some point we need to start thinking about purchasing our first home. I mean, after all, we need a place where we can store all of our oxen in a place where our family can rest in case they catch dysentery. Well, don't worry because this video is going to be all about things to consider when purchasing your first home. It will be the fourth and final stage of the home buying process and should give you a better idea of what to expect as you're getting closer to purchasing your first home. Alright, so before your mortgage lender fully agrees to let you borrow their money, they usually will require you to get a home appraisal and then recommend getting an inspection done on the home you are interested in purchasing. A home appraisal is when someone from a third party comes out and gives their unbiased opinion as to how much the home is worth. They usually will look at similar properties to see what they have recently sold for and can also base their valuation on different amenities your potential home offers. The reason your mortgage lender will usually require this is because they want to mitigate the amount of risk involved in the loan. For instance, in the event that you default on your loan, the lender will sell your home in order to recoup the money they lent to you. They ideally want to make sure they are not lending you more money than the home is actually worth. The next thing you'll have to consider prior to purchasing your first home is in regards to home inspections. Now, although these are not required by lenders in order to be approved for a mortgage, it is highly recommended that you get your home inspected prior to actually closing on a deal. The two main reasons for this are to look out for your safety and your finances. Everyone's seen that Carfax commercial where someone is in the process of buying a car and then out of nowhere out pops the fox that says, show me the Carfax. Well, the purpose of a Carfax is to show the history of the vehicle and any accidents it may have been in as you want to make sure the car you are purchasing is going to be safe and is not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road after the first few miles of driving it. Well, the same thing can be applied when buying a house. You want to make sure there's no life-threatening problems with the home, no sketchy wiring that's going to catch the place on fire, no mold in the house, and no issues with the roof or foundation. As you can imagine, paying for any structural issues in the home can be quite expensive and it may be the determining factor as to whether or not you close on a deal. These are all the different types of issues that can be uncovered when you hire a home inspector. Now, if you do find issues with the home after an inspection, then it's not the end of the world. Depending how the real estate market is at the time, you may be able to negotiate with the seller. Usually, you will have three different options. You can ask the seller to pay for the repairs. You can ask the seller to lower the purchase price of the home. Or you can request a closing cost credit. Now, options two and three are pretty similar. However, if you need extra money on hand to pay for things like repairs, then option three might be the way to go as you'll be required to pay less money on your closing costs. Now, of course, your ability to bargain with the seller is going to largely depend on the state of the market at that time. If there's more homes for sale on the market than there are buyers, then there's a good chance you'll be able to negotiate with the seller. 
But if you saw part one of this video series, then you know at the time of making this video, it's currently a seller's market and you're probably gonna have a hard time negotiating with sellers as there is more demand for houses than there is supply. So just be mindful of that when you are in the process of purchasing a new home. At this point of the home buying process, we're almost at the finish line and are one step closer to owning our first home. Your bank or mortgage lender is now assessing your financial background and determining how risky of a borrower you are and whether or not they're willing to give you a loan. One thing to be mindful of is they are going to require you to have homeowner's insurance prior to actually closing on a deal. Remember, your lender is trying to protect their investment and make sure they're able to recoup the money they lent to you. So in the event that you default on your mortgage payments and your house suddenly burns down, then your lender wants to ensure that they'll be able to get paid by the insurance company. So it's recommended that you buy enough homeowner's insurance to completely cover the cost of rebuilding the home in the event that it's ever destroyed. And so assuming everything has gone smooth up until this point and your bank or mortgage lender has finally approved you for a loan, congratulations, you have reached the closing day. At this point, you'll know exactly what you owe for your down payment and closing costs. And you'll pay this money to a title company, which manages this money in an escrow account because there are a lot of different parties involved within a real estate transaction. A title company will work with an escrow agent to make sure all parties receive the appropriate amount of funds prior to finalizing the deal. Once everyone has been paid, then you'll have to sign a bunch of paperwork with the title company who will finalize the deed and transfer the title of the home to your name. Once all of that is done, congrats, you are now officially a new homeowner. The last things you should consider, even though you're now legally a homeowner, are listed here. Moving costs. Are you going to be hiring a moving company to do all the work for you? Or are you going to be moving on your own? If you wanna save money, then you can try moving on your own. But realistically, you're probably gonna have to ask your friends and family to help you out. And I doubt you'll be able to compensate them with your childhood pog collection. So make sure you treat them to a nice lunch in exchange for helping you move. Similar to moving into a new apartment, you're gonna have to call the utility company to get the lights turned on. I know us millennials value mindlessly scrolling on the internet, so make sure you have all that set up prior to moving into your new home. The last thing to keep in mind is in regards to your kitchen pantry. No one wants to spend all week moving and then have to spend their first few nights in their new home with no internet or food. So make sure to restock the fridge in your new place prior to moving in. Thanks for watching. Stay frugal, fam.